Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about disturbing a chemical equilibrium. A change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner as to reduce or counteract the effect of the change. This is known as Le Chatelier's principle. There are three main ways to disturb an equilibrium. A change in concentration of one of the reactants or products, such as by addition of a reactant to a closed system, a change in temperature, such as cooling a reaction in an ice bath, or a change in volume for a gaseous system, which is also a change in pressure. The first of these disturbances is an increase in concentration. In the formation of PCl5, an increase in the concentration of either reactant or a decrease in the concentration of the product will shift the equilibrium to the right in order to compensate for the loss of product or excess of reactant. Conversely, a decrease in the concentration of either reactant or an increase in the concentration of the product will cause a shift to the left as the system will move to compensate for either less reactants or excess product. This can be shown graphically too. If the system is at equilibrium, the concentrations of the substances remain static, but remember the reaction is still occurring in both directions. If the concentration of chlorine is increased suddenly, then the equilibrium will have been disturbed, causing more reactants to be consumed, leading to a new equil equilibrium with different concentrations of products and reactants, but with Q equaling K. For the PCL5 system, the substances are at equilibrium with an equilibrium constant of 24 and after a disturbance when more chlorine is added the concentrations change to give a new initial value. Calculating the reaction quotient at this point then gives a non-equilibrium value. The new initial is then changed from the original by some value of x giving us a new equilibrium. The new equilibrium concentration of PCL5 is given as 0.637 moles per litre, which allows the value of X to be determined. Plugging this into the change for the reactants gives us new equilibrium concentrations for PCL3 and Cl2 as 0.163 moles per litre respectively. Changes in temperature are quite complex because it is the only change which will change the equilibrium constant value. Looking at the previous reaction of PCl3 and Cl2 in equilibrium with PCl5, the forward reaction is exothermic which makes the reverse reaction endothermic. If heat is considered as a component of the reaction, then an increase in temperature will cause the system to shift towards the endothermic side in order to consume the excess heat. This will increase the concentration of the reactants. Conversely, a decrease in temperature will cause a shift to the exothermic side in order to produce more heat, which will increase the concentration of the products. Temperature changes also affect Kc. So an increase in temperature will decrease Kc for systems with a negative heat of reaction and conversely if the heat of reaction is positive then Kc will increase. The Van't Hoff equation provides a quantitative description of the effect of temperature on the equilibrium constant. As R is the universal gas constant, if K1 and the heat of reaction at a given temperature are known, this equation allows the calculation of the equilibrium constant at a different temperature. Pressure can change the equilibrium position. Here is a reaction of two gas molecules, the yellow and blue circles, combining to make a single product, the green circle, at equilibrium. If the pressure is increased by reducing the volume, then the system will shift the equilibrium to reduce the pressure by reducing the number of molecules in the system and the reactants will be consumed as two moles can be reduced to one. Conversely, if the pressure is reduced, the system will move to increase the pressure and green product molecules will be converted into reactants, thus increasing the number of molecules as one product molecule becomes two reactant molecules. The system usually moves in the opposite direction to the change. Let's check comprehension. 